Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last videos, we had a look at, well, interacting with our Mongo database. And we used the native MongoDB driver as supplied by the MongoDB team. And while this driver isn't too bad, we used the 2.x version of it. And here you can see the code we wrote. Um, while it isn't too bad, these are really a lots of lines of codes for example, for simply retrieving all our data here. And you, you may do it this way, it isn't necessarily wrong, but in this video I at least want to show you an alternative which cuts down these lines of codes, which is, uh, you might say, an additional layer using the MongoDB driver we used in the last parts, but then abstracting it a little bit away or making it a little easier providing us an easier access and doing all this stuff we wrote here by hand behind the scenes. So this is something we'll have a look at in this video. And the name of this package, which does this for us, is Monk. Now here's an important thing. In the last videos, we used the MongoDB driver version 2.x. This driver already isn't too bad, as you saw in the videos. Monk requires MongoDB 1.4, the driver, the package 1.4, um, simply because in this older version, all the functionality we need is included, but it, well, it has less of this easy access we used in the last videos. So therefore, um, you really have to compare the access of the last videos with what we're doing now with Monk. Okay, enough talking, let's get started. So what I will do is I will take our MongoDB project here and just, well, copy it and give it a new name, of course. I will call it Monk because that's the name of the package we'll be using. And yeah, I'll give this some seconds to finish. Yes, I want to add it to Git. Thank you. So here I am. Now, the first thing I'll do is in the package, I'll change the version of MongoDB. And I will change it to version 1.4.1. The next thing I'll do is I'll go into my terminal here, make sure that I'm in this newly created folder, and I will run npm install to install this new MongoDB version. Once this is finished, I will npm install with the saved flag monk. And this should finish with it without any errors. So now monk is installed. As you can see, the package.json updated, and now we may use it. Now, in my index.js file, I will first get rid of all our MongoDB code here. Because, of course, we will write this from scratch using Monk. Now, using Monk is really easy. Don't need the URL here, don't need a cert, and don't need object. Here. First, we will import it or require it, and we will also automatically create the database with it, or the database connection with it. So I will create a variable db for database, and I will require monk, and this is actually a method or a function, and I will call this function, I will pass the address, the location of my MongoDB. And this is basically just if you remember last video, this URL here without the MongoDB part at the beginning. So I can just copy this, paste it in here. This is the first thing. The next thing is I want to set my default collection, which I will use throughout this file here. And this was the user data collection. So I will use my newly created database connection here and use the get method, which allows me to, well, get a collection and this collection has the name user data. That's the same name as in the last videos. So with this, we got our database and the connection to the database, as well as our, well, collection object here set up. So I'll start in this get method here, in this get route, in this get data route. I will create a new variable data, and I will set this equal to user data, which is our newly created collection, so to say, the representation of this collection or the connection to this collection. 
And here I will just call the find method, which is a method Monk offers us to, well, search for specific database entries. I'll pass an empty object to tell Monk that I want all the entries in this collection. I could in this object, well, specify conditions, which object should be retrieved. Like for example, name colon something, if we had an object which has this name property and we only wanted objects with this name we specify here. But for now, I want to retrieve all the entries or all the, or all the documents to state in no SQL uh, wording. So this is the first step, but this is not actually a list of our well, database documents here. This is indeed a promise and it has this on function where we can listen to the on success event. So if we successfully retrieve the data to then fire, well, another function. We then want to execute as this, of course, asynchronously. So here, this function will give us the actual documents which were retrieved. And I can then say that I want to, well, render my index page and I will pass the items just like in the last videos and will pass the documents we retrieved here and I can get rid of this result array. So if you compare this method here, this route here, with the same route in, well, the last part where we used the native MongoDB driver, you can see that it has got a lot shorter. We don't have to loop through all the entries. Uh, we don't have this extra array here, which we use, but instead, well, we simply have one call, which kind of sets up this search query. And then we wait for it to succeed to say, hey, what do you want to do with the results you get back? And what we want to do is, well, we want to pass them to our uh, view in this case. So this was not too difficult, I guess. And inserting data into our database isn't much harder, to be honest. Um, indeed, it's even easier, maybe. Uh, here in the post or in the insert route, I have my, my item. This is the same code as in the last videos. And what I will do here is I will simply use my user data collection representation I got here call the insert method, again, a method provided by Monk to insert data into our MongoDB. And well, I just pass the item I want to insert. Then <laughs> that's it. That really is all. Now I could also bind this statement here to a variable like var insert equals, and then again, listen to the on success method if I wanted to do something with it. But in this case, I'm fine doing it this way. In a real application, you would of course also well, care for error cases and handle them. But here, this is fine. And the redirect is fine too, of course. So this, uh, well, just one line, not too long. Next thing is updating. For this, we got two ways to do this. The first way is to use the user data and then update, the update method here. And this method takes two arguments at least. The first argument will be our selector, so to say, which says, which elements do you want to update? And here I'd say, I want to update all elements with an ID of, and now we need this object ID thing again, if you remember this from the last video. We can do get this with a little helper Monk provides us by using the DB connection or the Monk database object here and call the ID method on it. And this will allow us to transform any ID, in this case, the ID we're retrieving from our request into an object ID. So that's the first thing this allows us to um, select data we want to update. And the next argument is, well, what we want to put there or with what we want to replace this resource. In this case, our item here. And this, of course, should not be a comma, but a colon. So this is how we can update it. And we also would have an alternative, which is easier, even quicker. Got this update by ID method because well, updating by ID is quite a common case. And in this case, we don't need this DB ID thing here. All we do here is just pass the ID and the item and we're done. So I'm just going to comment out the first method, even though this would work perfectly fine as well. 
Last thing, deleting. Well, not too hard. Here again, we get two possibilities to do this. Like with the update, we could use user data delete and then, well, manually do the selection with id id. It's just the same code as with the um, yeah with the updating here. But I'm going to comment this out because I, of course, we also got our user data delete by id method here. Excuse me, remove by ID. And this is also remove, not delete. Make sure to get this right. So remove by ID, just pass the ID and you're done. Of course, as I said before, you can also bind all these functions, all these database queries here to variables, which are then promises, which you can then handle the same way we did it here on the get data to listen for success or error events. So with all this, let me save it and I will run my application here. And this little arrow here is not important at this point, it will work nonetheless. And then I will navigate to localhost 8000, which is our application here. Just bring it to some one side. So if we load data, well, we don't have any in the database here. So what I will do is I will create a new data entry here. And now you can see we got it. So getting and inserting does work. We can say this. Next thing is updating the data. Let me grab this ID here and I will name this a real title, real content and let's capital, um, make the first letter of max uh, capital letter. Update, load data. As you can see updating works as well. Last thing, of course, is deleting. Paste the ID in here, delete, load data, it's gone. So these are all the actions we did in the last video with the native MongoDB driver with Monk. And as you can see, Monk allows us to do this a little bit quicker and in a more convenient way maybe. But of course, it's up to you. You may also use the normal um, MongoDB driver, which we did in the last videos, and maybe you like this more. Maybe you want this more fine grained control over what happens behind the scenes. In the next video, we will have a look at an even more elaborate solution to this problem or to this whole database access thing, which is Mongoose, which will not only be uh, an extra layer allowing us to do all these database entries a little bit quicker, but it will be a fully fledged uh, ORM, which means it actually maps certain objects to database entries, like you might know it from Laravel's Eloquent. And this will allow us to interact with our database and to do some validation and define schemas in a very native way or in a very natural way. But you will see this in the next video. See you there. Bye.